Spawning in the bottom, we've got Enamel. And their opponent to the right, Fabled. I believe both players are newer to the scene. So this will be really cool to see. And we've kind of got like two variants of some fairly meta decks going on here. Fabled is going for this Owl Snake Wire approach. Meanwhile, Enamel's kind of got what uh, uh, in the textbooks, you know, kind of counters that approach. Um, if you can sniff out, that's what your opponent's going for, and you can hit a nice timing with the Boar and Falcon uh, before they get rolling too hard, you're, you're, most of the time you're in pretty good shape. And actually, I think real quick, sorry guys, I had the volume a little bit too loud there. That should be a little better on the, on the levels. Let me know in chat if anything sounds weird. A little easier in my headphones, too. So, Five Farm Double coming out from Enamel, speaking of weird. And Fable Scatter looks like uh, she did. I believe it's a she. Going into Six Farm Double in response. And Enamel is moving in, but Fable should have units out in time. And two squirrels can actually pick off a corner pig like this when they're not protected, so maybe this will actually work. No, the squirrel coming in, I think it just barely won't get. Oh, no! Ah, oh, I think it would have if Enamel uh, target fired there, but maybe these reinforcement reinforcing squirrels end up taking it out. Yeah, so that's a nice little pickup to kill the pig. But I, I think Fabled traded better in that uh, engagement, so I, I kind of feel like things even out a little bit. Keep in mind, Enamel did have to delay their own economy in order to get into that aggression there. And let's see where the game progresses uh, from this point forward. Pretty awkward map a little bit. There's a lot of this, uh, you know, double high ground, lots of trees and doodads and stuff in the way. A little bit of a tight choke here. That can make for some really interesting, like, concave versus convex situations or uh, positions where one army trying to come through here maybe gets a little too clumped up against things like uh, skunks. Could also allow for Fabled, if they get bold here, to like take this mill and set up some really cost effective barbed wire. You know, just placing like a piece or two right there, maybe over here to the side as well. It's a shame that neither player has something like balloons or, or even ferrets here, because this high ground, this double high ground in the middle, could be very abusive. And Fable's throwing down some barbed wire, but I don't think it's in time here. Enamel is moving forward. Going to be able to pick off most of this barbed wire in the process. It does provide a little bit of tanking, which is what F Fable needs to, to get this skunk up. But I don't think it's going to be here in time. Enamel, continuing on with the aggression, going to get some real damage done here. And that barbed wire was just a little bit too late for Fable, unfortunately. Nice attack there from Enamel. Let's see how they decide to continue forward just gonna go into more squirrels and fable did take some damage here gonna go ahead and rebuild those farms uh, but they've got the skunks now and the skunks will be able to kind of hold off this squirrel aggression at least for now uh, two skunks though it, you know the power level of, of four skunks versus two is is very it, it feels like exponential more than linear to me we have definitely seen in the past where you know, you can kind of overrun, like, Squirrel Skunk with Pure Squirrel. It has definitely happened. And now Fabled is trying to get into that double tier 2. But Enamel is just purely on tier 1, even throwing in a couple pigeons to help mitigate against the, the poison clouds coming out from the skunks. And going to take an expansion on the back of this. I do like that kind of thing, you know? Like, come in for the push and then expand behind. This is kind of rough for Fabled, though, because ideally you want to be a little bit in your structures and in your pigs for the defense but this high ground right outside the base makes that very difficult nice target firing there from enamel gonna get those skunks knocked out immediately and enamel continuing to push forward but fabled might hold on here more skunks and squirrels reinforcing enamel taking this frontline mill I, I i don't really like this frontline mill as much here this does slow down the like counter push but the, the mill really wasn't tanking too much in that engagement. But Fabled's really got to fight for this high ground vision, like, constantly. Making this very difficult. 
Really trying to keep these skunks alive. One of them went down. If, if Fable can somehow manage to, to get up to those four uh, skunks that they're going for, uh, they, they'd be in a very good position to try to hold this. Now we hit the five five minute mark, and this is actually kind of important. The four starting farms, um, one of them was one that got destroyed. So after the five minute mark, Fable still has four farms left, and it's four pigs of four pigs. Now, I actually wouldn't recommend rebuilding on this, uh, that, that, that farm sometimes after the pigs have taken too much damage, especially when you have the, uh, expansion up and running. You, you, you get a little more bang for your buck, uh, just going ahead and, and rebuilding that, that pig on, on the, the fresh new field of wheat there. Fable did have to sell down to just one skunk warren, but here we go, enamel. Maybe gonna go for the flank, just try to avoid this barbed wire here in the choke. Move all the way around. Oh man, this is brutal. Fable is not home Fable. If you look at the mini-map, Fable had went out and about on the map to scout, and this might just be game ending damage. Warren's going down here, Pig's going down. Fable's got nothing left besides a building pig on the expansion. And these skunks will clean everything up. And look at that army value graph, though. Maybe Fable held that hard enough to kind of mitigate the economic deficit here. Fable trying to go for a counterattack here. Does have two skunks. Oh, but Burrow's home. Sells off a Squirrel Warren. Needs to be careful. These skunks are up here on the front lines, not being microed. Gets back in time. Nicely done there. Keeps those skunks alive. Enamel still does have the better economy, but doesn't quite have the right unit set for this situation. Enamel has been doing a really good job this whole game, though. Trying to maintain the tempo, trying to stay aggressive. Doing a really uh, good job of, of targeting down the core units, trying to make sure that they get rid of those skunks. And now we're in a very scrappy match here. I, I think it's still <clears throat> a little bit favor favored for Enamel. But we'll see if Fable can come back. The longer this game goes out on, I think the better it gets for Fabled here as these additional pigs that Enamel has on the main base will slowly start mining out. Enamel's floating a lot of money. What's going to be the play here? Maybe thinking about it a little bit. Thinking really hard. Still thinking. There we go. <laughs> Alright, Chameleon goes down. And Fabled sells off the skunks in order to try to get back into the game economically. So let's see if Fabled can pull a rabbit out of the hat here with these chameleons coming up. The army that Enamel is putting together is quite strong. However, sometimes chameleons do have a difficult time attacking into warrens and pigs and stuff like that. But Fable doesn't have the raw numbers. If Fable can get up to like 15 squirrels or something before the chameleons hit, maybe Fable might have a chance to hold it off. Fable hasn't been able to get deep enough in there to scout that, uh, that a tier two is on the way. Both players at similar economies now. And I like this follow up from Enamel. I think the Chameleons are really smart in this position. Enamel knows the opponent's got barbed wire, could maybe try to cheese out a bunch of wire and, and try to eco up behind that or, or something, and the Chameleons do a good job dealing with the wire. And number two, Chameleons are just good in general in these low number situations. But let's see, Fabled is moving out. Enamel is not in the right position. If Fabled can just take out this mill, all the squirrels are there, but they're not quite defending yet. Here comes the attack, though, or here comes the defense, rather. And yeah, the Chameleons are just going to do such a good job uh, helping to clean clean up such small amounts of units. Now Fabled does know that there are Chameleons in play, though. And this barbed wire means absolutely nothing to the cams. This looks like Enamel's moving in for the killing blow here. Gonna back off though. Take their time. Fabled is feeling a little bit confident, stepping up here with the squirrels. 
Did pick up a few extra squirrels on the retreat. That was nice, but I think an Emil is about to return the favor here. And I think an Emil's got enough to just push in for the win. Let's see it. Coming in, these chameleons are just going to do such a good job on the front lines here. Knocking out all those squirrels very, very quickly. And I think Fabled is going to have to tap. Nice first round. Very aggressive play from Enamel, but Fabled showing a lot of resilience there, too. Did not go down without a fight. Let's keep her going. Game number two. <clears throat> it's playing on the left-hand side. We've got Fabled teching in the turrets this time around. And over on the right-hand side, Enamel. I think Enamel's got a similar deck as last time. Not sure if they had the, the lizards last time, but I'm pretty sure they had the uh, the rest of the units. Relatively big map here. I think that's generally good for what Enamel's trying to do. Looks like they want to get into those four skunks, you know, get the expansion rolling. And I might just... Fast forward a smidgen <clears throat> during some of these uh, uneventful early games. 8 farm openings from both sides. I do like this map a little bit better for Fabled. Uh, you know, a natural for enamel, that's really all you need 9 times out of 10. But taking this base here for enamel will be quite difficult as, as Fabled gets established on these two bases. We've been able to go in for fast snakes here. And Enamel is gonna get the scout. Good game sense from Enamel, only seeing that one tier one warring, know, knowing that there had to be more money somewhere. And going for mass lizards here. And mass lizards are very strong against most tier two. I think the only tier two I would argue they aren't strong against, at least in this phase of the game, would be Chameleons. And Fabled has the Snakes. Now, this Squirrel Snake defense can do okay, you know, as long as Fabled is, is kind of tucked into the uh, the Warrens. Oh, Enamel with the Juke, though. Gonna come in and knock out that Tier 2 Warren. That is huge. Now, Fabled can catch all these Lizards. Maybe Fabled can try to do a counterattack here. But two Warrens going down, one of them being a Tier 2 Warren. Is, is very rough indeed, and Fabled really doesn't have the Tier 1 Warrens available to do a strong counterattack. And fa instead, Fabled has decided to, to hunker down here and try to get up the double skunk. But Enamel is just producing so many lizards here, and this move out is a little bit ill-advised. Fabled is about to get caught here by Enamel and lose just absolutely everything, trying to desperately re retreat with the snake, but these lizards are just so fast. That is a dead snake right there, and now Fabled is going to have to come home, lick their wounds, and hope they can hold on. But this is 12 Lizards here against almost nothing from Fabled. Just a squirrel or two on defense as these skunks are desperately trying to get out. More damage coming in from here from Enamel. Really trying to stay aggressive. I like this approach generally. I think it's pretty smart against in, in this like Tier 2 meta that we're, we're at. You know, coming in and, and trying to punish opponents, you know, for going for some of these slower, higher tech units before they can really get up and running. And this is simply too much damage. Fabled is going to hold on and fight it out. A little bit of missed micro there from Enameled. I think if their target fire was a little bit more on point, they could have killed that skunk. But they did manage to get that pig as well. Which is nice. This is a tournament match, so Fabled is going to hold on. These skunks, though, out in the middle of the map by themselves, these lizards, will be able to clean these up no problem. And I think Fabled is just going to have to tap. Even if they don't, I think Enamel is about to finish this one up here. <clears throat> yeah, I love seeing this this lizard style really trying to, to punish a lot of uh, very quick tier 2. You can see that it worked quite effectively. All right, let's see if Fable can bring it back here in game number three. <clears throat> it's 
spotting the bottom right. Needing a win here desperately. We've got Fabled and their opponent up top, up 2-0, looking to close out the series. Enamel. All right, I set up, I set up some hotkeys. Now the question is, do I remember? Nope, that was the wrong one. All right, there we go. I set up, I finally set up a, a cough hotkey. It only took me three years. <laughs> That's the rate that we go at. I actually did, I, I updated my YouTube today as well. I'm, I'm gonna try to keep that a little bit more up to date. I know the vast majority of people just watch on Twitch. But it is always nice having that uh, archive available on YouTube as well. Ooh, enamel getting spicy here. Gonna go for the five farm double. Only squirrels though. And this is a little bit of a big wonky map in rush distance here, so Fabled will have plenty of time to respond to this. They've got the barbed wire as well, and they've got uh, lizards. So yeah, I think just selling down to, I think seven farm probably would have been okay here. But gonna be safe and go for the six farm instead, even building into a couple toads. And I think these lizards will be out in time. This worm will take a couple hits. Fable kind of running these units in one by one, though. That is going to be a problem here as more and more of enameled units get together. I think if Fable just waited just a little bit longer for like two or three units to get together, you know, waited till it, it's rough to get that edge because it, it would have been like on the precipice of that tier one Warren dying. Like, that's when you got to go in. But I think Fable will hold this. Yeah, decent hold here and. Keep in mind, Enamel is still on five farms. So that early game was was a bit of, of a wreck. I think Enamel got the Warren. There was a Warren that was right there. I'm not sure if Enamel got it or if Fabled sold it. I should have been paying a little bit closer attention there. But now we'll stabilize. I think that was a, a nice attack there from Enamel. You know, going for a five farm double on a relatively larger map like this with a little bit of a long rush distance is a little counterintuitive. You know, you wouldn't expect it. And, and oftentimes that, that's when rushes excel the most. Now, Fabled has, has drastically changed up the composition here. Got the cam boar. Looks like... Fabled was going a little bit more all in on trying to counter these squirrels from enamel. But, or I'm sorry, the lizards. But there are no lizards this time around. However, I think Fabled armies should be fine to clear these up. These toads should get some decent connections. Actually, not quite. The toads weren't there on the front lines fast enough. But the lizard just, oh, gets that farm. It's absolutely huge. Enamel with some serious aggression here. However, one thing that Fable does have going for them is the Chameleons. It is a little bit difficult for Chameleons to attack in to main base situations like this. I think oftentimes what you prefer is if they have like a fledgling expansion, you know, that you can kind of deny, but Fable's commander goes down. Oh no, the Chameleon goes down for free. All these lizards will be cleaned up as well. And that is always feels bad, man. That's one of the most frustrating ways to lose in my opinion because that was just such a big advantage there for enamel it is going to be very very difficult for fable to come back from here but never say never let's see if fable can make their way back into this game i, I think maybe the idea is to try to play defense try to eco up where you can you know you can't be too greedy <clears throat> yeah mochaccino pointing out it, it is definitely best to, to wait for the double cam before moving out as well but Fabled knows that they're in a little bit of bad shape here. Gonna try to get something done. Maybe if they can deny this mill, that would certainly be something. I think Fabled should have moved in with the Lizards as well, though, since they are so fast and Enamel's out of position. And Enamel's just gonna let it go for free. Not even gonna contest it. And now Fable can get out of here if they so please. Honestly, I think they could take this engagement. Uh, if they want to, but gonna play the safe game, just gonna come home, spend the money, maybe get into double cam here. Yeah, going up to double cam. 
And this is kind of neat, like the double cam versus double skunk. <clears throat> I'm not exactly sure who wins that engagement. I'm kind of liking Enamel's position for the fight, mainly just because they have a bit of a lead right now. And this is kind of risky. Four farms on that second base. Especially after this second base from the opponent was just denied. Enamel has been put into this all-in position. And is just going to wait for these four skunks before moving out. Now, if Fable can hold on, I'd love to see some emergency barbed wire here. Like, if Fable holds on, then they're in a phenomenal position to, to really start coming back in this game. But I think we need some barbed wire, like, right here, right now. Fable knows this attack is coming in. And is just going to go for the engagement. Let's see how well these cams do against the, the skunks. Actually busting through some of these skunks pretty reasonably here. But a couple of the skunks still do remain. One of the chameleons was a bit late to the fight, unfortunately, for Fable. And Fable gonna desperately try to muster up what they can for this defense. Gets that those last couple skunks. That's actually huge, and Fable holds. It does suck losing this pig. But now Enamel is in shambles here. This main base is all they have mining. I'm curious if, yeah, they need to sell one of the Tier 2 Warrens. And as this game just gets longer and longer, this is looking better and better for Fabled. But Fabled is going to push in. Going to see if they can end the game right here, right now. Before Enamel has the opportunity to get those skunks back up. Wants to get over here with this cam and, and get some harassment in. But this is very, very risky. That cam is going to be taken out by itself. So I like the concept. Oh, and this mill is actually doing a lot of good uh, work here, tanking during this fight. <clears throat> so a bit of a, a blunder there for Fable to lose that cam before the big engagement. <clears throat> but let's see. I mean, if Fable's lizards get out, and keep in mind, defender's advantage is very important. Fabled is not aware this attack is coming, though. Building more farms. And here comes a big fight. And yeah, I mean, these squirrels got a long way to go for the reinforcements. These cams are cleaning up these skunks very nicely. Ugh, if these, this chameleon could stay alive, that'd be huge, but it does fall. However, this is still looking good for Fable. Like, one farm left here for Enamel. Enamel's got to decide if they want to... All in Yolo Bolo one more time, or or desperately try to start building some farms. Now, I did not realize, but Enamel does have this Grismill already established, which is good. But the economic advantage here for Fabled is absolutely massive. Fabled's been doing a very good job this game of kind of like sneaking out that extra farm or two. Really, it was four farms at once on the second base, so I guess that is incorrect for me to say. But it really paid off. I, I was worried about that risk. And at the end of the day, it actually worked. Okay, so... Fable building back up to that 8-farm economy. Gonna push out again. I'd like to see a little bit... More careful control with the chameleons. Nable does get to see how far behind they are. <clears throat> Let's see if Fable can actually punch in for the win. This is a little bit rough. Like, I wouldn't... Honestly, I wouldn't hate to see Fable just slam down, like, three more Lizard Warrens and wait, like, 20 seconds and then go. Let's see. Fable's actually gonna get the boar. So just gonna play defense for a couple minutes. <clears throat> and let that boar get out. And honestly, I don't think Enamel's got the economy to do anything about it. Um, this Tier 3 transition will allow Enamel to kind of start, like, building back into the game. But let's see, is Fable going to apply pressure with the army they've got right here right now? Looks like it. Just moving in with these chameleons. And this is one of the, the more difficult parts of Tooth and Tail. Like, I, I feel like Fable played this lead very safely. 
But like really understanding when you can punch in and just win the game is is difficult. And I I totally understand why players, especially in the beginners division, will will really reconsider that and really think, you know, do I have enough? You know, is it the right call to move in? Should I should I wait a little bit longer? Um, there's there's definitely some some options there. But Fabled fighting back here, putting a point on the board. We've got a series now. Oh gosh, I hope the stream is not down. Is it just Ziggy? No, the stream is not down, thank you. Let me actually... This is bothering me. Can I just... Can I just... Just, just a little bit there? Alright. Alright, close enough. Okay. Let's get into game number four here. <clears throat> Spelling on the left-hand side is Enamel. And their opponent to the right, Fabled. All right, so this is actually kind of cool. We, we've, we've reversed roles a little bit from the first game, you know. Now Enamel is is rocking the, uh, the Chad late game build, the Owl Snake Wire. And Fabled has the uh, the boar falcon approach to to try to combat that. That's kind of really funny that when when both players went for one of these, like the other one was available. Like I, I don't think the the boar style here is just to counter this owl snake, but it does it does really nicely in that role. Um, but it's still a solid deck regardless of what the opponent's doing. I like to see some of these matches without skunks too you know skunks are very strong in the meta right now but players are experimenting more with toads with chameleons since those units just got buffed and, and toads can do a pretty good job of getting that aoe in and i i'm honestly <clears throat> i for one accept our toad overlords like i i'm excited to navigate through the toad meta personally because it, it 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 seems really strong but in my opinion it, they're also it also seems a little bit micro intensive and it seems like there there could be opportunities for counterplay, you know. And and I think that's what's exciting for me about it. Like trying to you know, let's say you have like squirrel lizard, the opponent has squirrel toad. You might do something like build just three lizards, right? And they have like nine toads and the guy with nine toads is is obviously going to want to get those big big hits but you can try to like buffer with your three lizards and get all those extra toads to explode on them you know what i mean or we'd even seen in the past when when toads were were meta players would use chameleons and in, in just low numbers like the opponent started doing a, a lot of toads like you get the chameleons to get out there and and kind of block for you so i uh i i'm curious uh, how that is, how that's gonna go. Yeah, I do need to, to, um, to fix that. People have com complained the past couple times I've been live about the stream quality. Not that it's bad, the, the stream quality just doesn't have options. I, I do, I do hear y'all, and I will see if I can investigate it, um, next. And I, I know I, I'm, I'm memeing a little bit in unit discussion, but I, I don't know. Like, I, I honestly don't think... Things like snakes and skunks really need drastic nerfs. I think we need to kind of wait a little bit longer and see how the meta plays out. See if people come up with creative, uh, creative answers. <clears throat> it's still a very, very fresh meta. I mean, this patch hasn't even been out a week yet. So, you know, with things like like toad builds being more and more relevant, you know, toads might become this this tier one unit that can really do the business to a lot of the tier 2 units, you know. Which, which could be fairly exciting. Now, in this match, eh, we've got a little bit of a macro game on our hands. Fabled here has got the superior economy going up on two bases, going into Falcons at the moment, and has Fabled really got a good opportunity to come in and scout? Hasn't in the meantime, but what they've seen so far is just tier 1. 
So in general, these Falcons are, are better off against the tier two, but with I do like that Fabled is building a lot of lizards here to help kind of buffer the front line uh, for these Falcons to theoretically do all the damage in the back and stay pretty fairly protected. However, I am getting a little bit worried about these toads here for enamel. I think Fabled really needs to scout the toads. And again, maybe try, I mean, you could just go the same toad numbers. You could try to be the player with the more toads or you could do things like just go into three toads and try to get your three to trade with their six, you know, stuff like that. All oh, right, Fabled is going to try to punish this expansion attempt from Enamel. We'll, we'll have to just desperately sell off all those farms. Loses the mill. And is Fable going to try to take this engagement or try to get the hell out of dodge? Ooh, these so connects actually aren't... Oh, well, now they are. I was going to say weren't the best because they're only hitting a few of those uh, of those lizards as they're kind of running through. And now Fable is desperately trying to get home with these couple extra falcons. And, and uh, yeah, I think I would... I, I think Fable just really needs some toads here to round things out. However, Fable's just got such a large economic lead. Like, yeah, that engagement was a little bit rough. You know, those toads got some good connections. Lost a few falcons there. However, denying this base was so huge, especially since we just hit the five-minute mark. I mean, Fabled is just miles ahead in economy now. Even going for a third base here. Fable looking to deny that expansion again, but Enamel has not taken it. I think Enamel is looking for one big last hurrah here and has got one scary army. A ton of squirrels, six toads. Actually, those toads not connecting super well yet. More toads are coming in. All these falcons in the air trying to gun down the chameleons. Enamel actually stealths the chameleon. Well, no, he doesn't. Well, there's nothing for them to attack on the ground. But the problem here is it really doesn't matter unless Enamel can just push in for the kill move. Now, this follow-up army might be too strong. I think just having the one tier one here is getting really punished by the lizards. Like, Fabled is just so far ahead. Yeah, and I think Enable just had to go for it there. And they might have been able to do it, to be honest. Like, Enable had a pretty heavy army lead there. So I think backing out was a mistake. I, I think if Enamel would have come in this way and hopped on top of those lizard warrants... They might have just won the game, but again, I, I don't think it matters how cost-effective Enamel is being in these these trades because Fabled's economy is just so far ahead. So this is very rough for Enamel. They got 30 seconds left on the clock, but the problem here is after they start engaging, look at this, the food count is going to go low, so I think... Enamel's idea was, hey, I can fight, and then I can, you know, use this mill to, to build a warren and stop myself from starving. But it's not going to happen. For one, Enamel loses the fight there. Even though Enamel was very cost-effective, and I think arguably had the better army comp there, that was just a game of economy. Fable did a really good job transitioning into a strong economy, denying the opponent from expanding, and just staying there. So now we have reached the hype match here. Match number five. I love this scoreboard, by the way. Big shout out to Dizon, man. Dizon did a ton of work behind the scenes for the uh, Championship Cup. Really made some like clever HTML type things that would like automatically bring up the players' names and their like Discord icons and stuff like that. We aren't really utilizing all the bells and whistles here, but I still think that that scoreboard is very sharp. Okay, match number five. Let's get into it. Spawning the bottom left, we've got Fable and their opponent to the right, Enamel. I don't know, man. It's a really exciting time for Tooth and Tail. Like, there's a lot going on. We've got this this event happening. And we are in the preseason right now, so if you're like a newer player and you want that, I'm, I'm, my, my big two pieces of advice, if you're a new player, is is get in the Discord 100%. Uh, 
The Discord is, is almost like a requirement for this game. And, and number two, like, really don't be shy about joining some of these events. Oh, hold that thought. I'm trying to talk my way through the early... Enamel! All right, that must have been a mistake. Oh my god, Enamel is about to be my hero, dude. If he was going to go four farm Falcon. Mishi actually used to do a, like, four, far, four or five farm snake harassment build that was, that was really oppressive. Kind of fun, you know, get that snake out so early, it's got a lot of HP, it can, it can harass very easily. But it still goes for the five farm double. Fabled is aware, and Fabled will be just fine here. And this opening is going to be good uh, for Fabled. Uh, yeah, Namel should not commit to this. Maybe they will. I mean, Lizards are not the best on defense, and these Warrens are actually placed in such a position where... Enable can can pressure them without direct engaging. It is gonna pick up that Warren. That's actually really big. Fable here needs to do some target firing. Needs to make sure to clean this up in flying colors. And desperately get back home and build some more tier one Warrens. But yeah, if, if you're newer from the scene, I, I know we just got a lot of uh, coverage from, from Day9 streaming it uh, last week. It, you know, get in the Discord and don't be afraid to, to join the events. Like, we're in the preseason cup right now, but once 2021 comes in, we're, I think we're going into TNT Championship 2021. And what's really fun about kind of newer events, this has been a theme in, in most events we've had lately, is there's different divisions, right? So if you're a beginner, you can just play in the beginner division and, and you don't have to worry about guys like Erlu or, or Tiki Gray just running you over. However, that... that Last attack from Fabled, although well-intentioned, was a little bit of a blunder here. Now, Enamel has a critical mass of squirrels to try to get something done here. One pig already falls. Fabled will be able to hold. Losing that pig is a little rough. However, Fabled does have the better economy and does have more warrens than the opponent. And Enamel investing 60 food into this mill is actually kind of a, a big commitment at this phase. Yeah, Enamel's all in on this. And again, this Warren, this one Warren, really good job from Enamel. I think Enamel has been showing some some really good game sense on on staying very aggressive, trying to punish the opponent as much as possible uh, throughout this series, and constantly keeping Fabled on the defense here. But it looks like things are gonna settle, and now Fabled does have the Lizard advantage. This is a great opportunity for Fable to get in here and return the favor. Gonna jump in. Gonna get that Warren, but loses a lot of Lizards in the process, however... I think Fabled is kind of okay with that trade. Fable coming in for some more aggression here. Get a little bit done. I like this kind of test in the waters and, and that sort of thing. But here come the Toads, and I think one thing that Fable did incorrectly last game was that they didn't utilize that secondary Tier 1 to help combat the Toads. And, and in this case, it is Fable's own Toads, right? <clears throat> so that's an adjustment I, I'd like to see going into the camps here. Modern Toads aren't as AoE-centric as they used to be. They used to just straight up delete, like, a Lizard pack completely. Um, now, Modern Toads deal more single target damage. Still very effective for the AoE, of course. But I think in the perfect world with your Toads, like, what you want to do is you want them to get that, that big single blast on, like, the enemy's Tier 2, like, on their Skunk or something. And then the AoE just kind of hits all the Tier 1 around it. All right, Enamel moving in for a push. This has been a very aggressive game so far. Fable did manage to get one of these chameleons up and running. Is gonna try to contest this. And the chameleon tanks a lot of damage there. Knocks out a couple of those toads. That was a little bit of an awkward pathing for the lizards on defense here. And, and a lot of people are, are kind of curious on like, you know, why should I ever run run squirrels when, when lizards seem to be the better unit pound for pound? And I think situations like this really show you where squirrels would kind of be preferred. Like, squirrels are, are much better on defense. 
you know, since they can kind of hide in the Warrens and stuff, so. Looks like Fabled is gonna lose, about to tap out, just kind of wanted to go in and see what the opponent had. No chance to tap, though, as Enamel blows up the, the mill there, and really cool series, really close series. 